here. And Paul wasn't saved until Acts chapter 9. Okay? Romans 16, 25, Paul says this, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. And by the way, Paul's gospel here is unheard of, never known prior to this time here that Christ would die on a cross for our sins, be buried and rise again, and that would be sufficient to justify us if we put our faith in it. That's Paul's gospel. That was not known here. 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 But it is known here through Paul. Uh, let me see that. According to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the what? The mystery which was kept secret since the world began. Prophecy was known since the world began, but the body of Christ, the mystery, was kept secret since the beginning of the world. See the difference? 1 Corinthians 2, 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. <laughs> Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory or our glory in this living in this period of time that we can live in now. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 5. Which in other ages, back here, was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now, this period of time here, now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Verse 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God. This mystery program, God knew about it before he created everything, but he kept it secret. He kept it hidden within himself during all of earth's history, and then he finally reveals it to a guy by the name of Paul. Colossians 1.26, Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now, here we go, dispensation of the grace of God, but now is made manifest to his saints. You see that separation there between the prophecy, the Israelites that's going to reign and rule here, and then the body of Christ that was hid, secret, a mystery in God, and then revealed to Paul the gospel of the grace of God. All of this deals with going to earth in Jerusalem, Israel. All of this, us today, we're going to heaven. Okay? There's a vast difference between prophecy that was spoken by the mouth of all of God's holy prophets since the world began, and that which was keep secret, kept secret since the world began. This was kept secret since the world began. This was made known before the world began and during our time. Okay? God's plan to establish the messianic Christ kingdom, thousand-year reign over there at the end there, was no secret to the Jews. The kingdom is the very theme of Old Testament prophecy. Now, under these things, I'm going to show you just a little bit about this kingdom here real fast. I've got like four or five ref verse references under each one. But I'm not going to use them because it takes too much time. But it's for this period of time right here. We're in heaven. The tribulation takes place. Christ returns to earth. And he... Ties the devil up and chains him in hell for a thousand years, right? And this is this thousand year kingdom that had been promised them. Now, it will be set up on earth. Deuteronomy 11:21 says this that your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children, the Israelites, in the land, Israel, which the Lord swore unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. This period of time is going to be heaven on earth because heaven has come down to earth in the person of Jesus Christ. When he says over here the kingdom of heaven is at hand, he's not talking about this. He's talking about this earth that will be heaven on earth because Christ will rule and reign 
and not President Obama. Won't that be great? Amen? Amen. I just thought I'd say that. Stimulus, the stimulus passage, just, it's awful. <laughs> God help us. Another good verse that they use all the time, uh, Matthew 6.10, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth. That they prayed for this time here, okay? And I had a lot of other verses. So it will be set up on the earth, this kingdom. It will be a theocracy. That means God reigning in the person of Christ. Also, it will be centered at Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. I have lots of verses for that. It shall extend to all the earth. In other words, from the land of Israel, they will be a kingdom of priests, and they will be ministering to the entire world that's left. Okay? And... Uh, also, all Israel will then be saved. Many verses. Also, Israel's suffering and sorrow will then be finally over. And, you know, it makes me so mad when I see all the countries and even my government go against Israel. Uh, you know, and, and it's not going to get any better. And it's not going to get better until the Prince of Peace comes down and rules with them. Okay? But it will come one day. Something else about the kingdom Israel will then be a blessing to all nations. All the nations. For instance, I wrote these verses down. Isaiah 60, verse 3. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to thy brightness of thy, what? Rising. Okay? Uh, Zechariah 8, 13. And it shall come to pass that as you, you were a curse among the heathen, O house of Judah and house of Israel, so I will save you, and you shall be a blessing. Fear not, but let your hands be strong. Verse 23. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. That's during this period right here. Okay? And then, of course, you know the famous word, word, words, promise uh, to Abraham. Genesis 22, 17, 18 says this, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And then he says, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou has obeyed my voice. And that will be right over here. That's when they will bless all the nations. Okay? Also, that kingdom, the government will be purified. Perfect judgment. Perfect righteousness. War and bloodshed will be abolished. Prince of Peace is there. Health and long life will be restored to the human race. If a person dies at the age of 100 during that thousand-year millennial reign there, it will seem like they were just a little child, it says. The animal creation will be tamed. Now, that's going to be something. Wolf, you know, lamb down with the lion. And then the curse will be removed from the vegetable creation. And Christ reigning, his kingdom will be an amazing utopia upon this earth for a thousand years. It's going to be something wonderful one of these days. That's that kingdom and the people of Israel. Look, Israel's kingdom on earth. That is prophecy. Okay? Now, this prophetic program, except Paul's, deals directly with Israel, the nations, but not with the body of Christ. All of these prophecies that will be fulfilled deal with Israel, and it has nothing to do with the body of Christ. It has nothing to do with us. Upon Israel's final rejection of a living Christ Messiah in Acts 7, God finally sets the nation of Israel aside temporarily. Then... God spoke through the Apostle Paul. He saves Paul in Acts chapter 9, and that's called a transition from Acts 9. As you go to the end of Acts 28, the Jewish nation has been set aside completely, 
and the body of Christ now is in full force. Okay? And by the way, that's why some things intermingled from Acts 9 to Acts 28. Like Paul, he took a Jewish vow, he shaved his head, he had one of his uh, ministers circumcised, he went to the temple, uh, he water baptized, he did a few of those things, but after Acts 28, you never find any of them in his life ever again. Never again. Uh, Acts 28, 28 says this, Be it known therefore unto you, you people of Israel, he's in Jerusalem, that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and that they will hear it. And Paul leaves. Romans eleven thirteen says this, For I speak to you Gentiles insomuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. I magnified mine office. Who's our apostle? Paul. It's not Peter, James, John. Now we love them, okay? We read of them, we love them. <laughs> Don't get me wrong here, but they're not our apostle. They're the apostle to the nation, they're apostles to the nation of Israel. Paul is our apostle, okay? Thus, while Israel and the prophetic program are temporarily set aside. During this period of time that God, until the fullness of the Gentiles, the body of Christ is being completed. This is a period of time that Israel has been set aside. Temporarily. Okay? The body church then is made up of predominantly Gentiles with Paul, their apostle. This new program. Colossians 1, 26 and 27 says this, Even the mystery, which had been hid from ages and from generations, but is now made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, I don't know about you, but being here, I have hope. But boy, the Gentiles back here are being alienated from any of the covenants of God. No favor. But now we have hope. Isn't that good news for us today? What a privilege to live in the day and age in which we live. Okay? Did I put Romans eleven twenty five? 25? For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. So this blindness, this setting the nation of Israel aside, prophecy has been set aside, stopped. Their clock calendar, uh, prophetic calendar has stopped. It's on hold. But when we go up in the rapture, bam, that clock starts again and God begins to deal with the nation of Israel again. Okay? We also know for sure when the mystery program is completed, God will fulfill his prophetic program with Israel. Romans eleven twenty six, 26. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, Israel, when I shall take away their sins. One day, all Israel, the little flock, that remnant, will be saved in that tribulation period time, beginning from the middle of the week to the end of the tribulation. That's when that takes place. And the reason I keep saying temporarily, one day it's going to be great for them, is because a lot of people are trying to say that the body of Christ has taken the place of the nation of Israel. And that's a lie. All Israel will be saved one day. They will be saved. Uh, what a vast difference today, the mystery body, the gospel grace program. So different from the prophetic earthly reign of Israel and her King Messiah. This is really an unbelievable difference, this body of Christ from the nation of Israel reigning in Jerusalem uh, on, on the throne there, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ will be in the third heaven, and they will be on the earth. That is quite a difference, don't you think? Huh? Now, here's some verses, different things, aspects about us in the body of Christ. Just 
Notice these verses. Acts 20, 24. But none of these things move me, neither can I my life dearer to myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the mystery which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Let me say something to you. There has been grace throughout all of human history by God. Noah found grace. Amen? Right? But it's never been the dispensation of grace where one person has done all of the work. Nothing is required of mankind but just to believe. That's never been in history. Okay? Uh, Ephesians 3, 2. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you were. Uh, Ephesians 2.16 and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. In other words, in one body, the Jews are not favored and the Gentiles are not favored, but both of us come the same way now, and we have equal access. It's, uh, what, flat at the foot of the cross, they say? That's where everybody's the same today in the body of Christ. Uh, by the way, what a change that is here than what had gone on previously. Okay? Here, we can stand because of the finished work of Christ. Okay? And then he says this in Ephesians 3, 6, that the Gentiles, that's us, should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. And golly, I mean, you know, Jew, Gentile now, we're all the same in the body of Christ, and we get there through our faith in that gospel now, right? Ephesians 4, 4. There is one body, one spirit, even as you are called, in one hope of your calling. One body. When you get saved, you're placed in that body. It's a spiritual body of Christ, and it's seated in the heavenlies next to Christ. That's where we are. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, when you put your faith in Christ, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. I say, yes, I put my faith in the gospel. The spirit of God takes me out of Adam and he baptizes me, immerses me spiritually into the body of Christ. That's who we are now in that body. Uh, Galatians 3, 27, for as many as you have been baptized into Christ, and by the way, only the Spirit of God can place you into the spiritual body of Christ. That's not water. That's spirit baptism that we just read a minute ago, okay? Into Christ, have put on Christ, and then he says, verse 28, for there is neither Jew nor Greek. Now let me just say something. When he says that, from Genesis 12 all the way through history, all the way over here, the Israelites favored. But now God says, you're neither Jew, you're neither Gentile. You're just one of mine. Now, you see the change there in that, that period of time? Then it states in uh, Ephesians 2, 6, And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Today we are seated in the heavenlies as far as our position, spiritual position is in Jesus Christ because we're in him. Uh, it states in Ephesians 1, 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. That's where our joy, our happiness, our finish is going to end up. It's going to be here in heaven. Heavenly spiritual blessings. Do you notice he does not talk about on the earth and all of this going on the earth. All of it's toward heaven. This Entity, this body of Christ is completely something different than ever had been ha had ever happened in the history of mankind that we're in right now. Philippians 3:20, for our conversation is in what? Heaven, heaven. Uh, Colossians 3, 1 and following says this: if you then be risen with Christ, you've been saved, seek those things which are above. Okay, I, I don't seek. The land, I don't seek a nation. I don't seek somebody sitting on the throne. Everything's toward heaven, isn't it? Above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things 
above. Understand who you are in Christ. Ours is above. Has nothing to do with the earth. And you know, our roots are so deep in this old world right here. When Christ calls us, he's going to have to pry some of us. You know what I mean? To leave this old world, huh? You tell people right now that we're not going to be here on the earth, they almost start crying. Isn't that amazing? Do you understand? We're going to heaven, people. Golly, you can stay on earth if you want to. I'm going up. Amen? And then what I say, uh, verse 3, For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God, which is in heaven. Uh, Ephesians 6, 19, about done. 6, 19, And for me the utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly. Why? To make known the mystery of the gospel. God wants us as a group of people to understand the mystery, this thing that was hid, but now it has been revealed in his word through the apostle Paul and the letters he has written and so on. And he wants us to share that with as many people as we possibly can. Now, my question to you is, why hadn't somebody shared it with me? Why hadn't they shared it with you? Why are we just now starting to learn a little bit? Because Christian and religion and tradition has kept us shut up away from truth. And people would rather follow religion and tradition than they would, they would the truth of God's word. God forgive us. Romans 16, 25 again says this, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. Now, I did those things to show you the difference between prophecy that deals with the nation of Israel and the body of Christ, the mystery that we are in today. Here we go. Now, get this. Prophecy and then mystery. Prophecy concerns a kingdom, a political organization. The mystery concerns Christ's body. It's a living organism. The kingdom will be established on earth. The body is given a position in heaven. Christ for the Jews is to be their king. To us, the body, Christ is our living head. The kingdom was prophesied since the world began. The body chosen in Christ before the world began was kept secret since the world began. Isn't that amazing? The Gentiles to be blessed through Israel's rise. The Gentiles are blessed through Israel's fall. That's us today. Prophecy concerns blessings both materially and spiritually on earth. The mystery concerns all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Prophecy concerns Christ coming to the earth. The mystery explains Christ's presence, absence from the earth, and he's going to take us from this earth. In prophecy, salvation by grace through faith alone is not contemplated. They don't understand why Christ died on the cross. You've seen the verses for that, okay? But salvation by grace through faith alone lies at the very heart of the mystery. The prophetic program revealed through many of God's servants. The mystery program is revealed through one man, Paul, as he tells others, okay? The Old Testament writers frequently did not understand the prophecies made known through them. But Paul understood and longed that others might understand the mystery that had been revealed to him. So, the believer's hope today is to be with Christ in heaven. The mystery heavenly hope is found only in Paul's epistles. God's program for earth is identified as prophecy to the nation of Israel. God's program for heaven is identified as the mystery, the body that's going to heaven. Okay? Just about done here. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11, 12 says this. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles, in the flesh you are called uncircumcision, and so on. Time past. Then the next verse he says this. That at that time you were without Christ and so on. So, there is a, what, let me see here. 
time past. Okay? Then he says in Ephesians 2.13, But now in Christ ye who were sometimes far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. You can skip those other two verses. Now you have time now. Okay? And then verse 7. If you can go to verse 7, I'd appreciate it. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. Then you have time, what? Future. All of time past has to do with prophecy. All of time present has to do with the mystery. All of time future after the rapture takes place has to deal with prophecy being fulfilled. So, when you read your Bible, prophecy, time past, Genesis all the way over to Acts 8. He's dealing with Israel. This is what they're looking for, okay? Time present right now, I turn to the book of Romans all the way through Philemon. And I read those there. That's Paul. Time future, he begins to deal with the nation of Israel as they go through the tribulation and then into their kingdom. So when I interpret the Bible, I look at it as prophecy or mystery. Everybody said? Clear as mud? So you have your different dispensations. And then over here. You even have one after that, actually, in eternity. But to narrow it down somewhat, you remember prophecy deals from Genesis 12 all the way to Acts 8. And then... The mystery deals with Paul from Romans to that mystery, and then prophecy returns so it can be fulfilled. They do. That has to be fulfilled. Daniel's 70th week, and they have to fulfill that, and then go into the, the thousand-year reign, and then after that, the white throne judgment, and then go into eternity. So, when I read my Bible, who's he writing to? What, where, when, why, and all that. And then that helps me to keep it straight. I don't try to, I have to be careful about making a doctrine here, but bringing the verses from here to make doctrine there. That's what's going on today. And that's why that creates then confusion. What was expected of those people here, or even back here some, is different than what God expects from us here. So when I read my Bible, I try to keep that. So back here, you know, they had to uh, repent, uh, be baptized. Okay. And had to have faith, of course. And they had to obey. I mean, he even had to be circumcised. But, so now, that's back here. Now, if I bring these things here, and especially these top three here, and I bring them over here, now I've got a church of Christ. Now I have a Christian church that believes in baptismal regeneration. If I bring the circumcision or the commandments and I bring it over here now I have a seventh day Adventist now if I bring some of those things over here now I have a Baptist you see what I'm saying so I have to be careful that for my dispensation that I am here that's specifically to me my major doctrine needs to be based up on in this time frame. 
just like these Jews here. They had the law. They looked at the law differently than we look at the law. They look at the law as a means they had to obey or die. That's why they had, by the way, the Levitical, Leviticus sacrificial system, right? Because they could not keep the law. So they would offer animal blood sacrifice to keep on going. But over here, I'm not under the law. Amen? So I'm under grace here. So I look at the law differently. It was a schoolmaster to condemn everybody, to show everybody was sinner needing a savior. But all I'm just saying is that I have to be careful about what I put into here. Now, I can take certain things from over here like creation. And creation is good all the way through, isn't it? Right? You know, there are some things or the character of God. You learn so much and so you bring it over. Those things are fine. But when it comes especially to the area of salvation, I think that's where the rubber meets the road mainly. Right? You know, I think that's where the key is. And uh, questions? Huh?